I made a post today about fat and carbs and which one is more likely to make you fat. And I wanted to get into this and explain it to you because it's really important. And it's like one of the things that I see the most confusion about in terms of nutrition, especially right now. I know that I come from the keto community. Hello, I have a book called Short Term Keto. I was one of the people who really pushed forward the keto movement back in 2017. What's up, Tony? And I want to talk to you guys about fat and carbs because guess what? This, I'm going to put it really simple. If you are not on a, if you are no, not just on a ketogenic diet, because some of y'all think you're on keto, but you're not really. If you are not testing your ketones and making sure that you are in actual ketosis or you really know that you're in ketosis, if you're not that, which is really hard to achieve ketosis, it's not like, oh, I just kind of like, I kind of eat keto-ish. No, you're not in ketosis. I highly doubt it. If you don't know, if you are in ketosis, you don't need to eat that much fat. You don't, yep, I said it. You need to eat fat. Fat is really important. And somebody asked, what's fat? Like fat in animals, especially the healthy animals, because we store toxins in fat and so do animals. You want to be eating healthy animals as much as you can. Nuts, seeds, oils, avocados, all those things, right? That what What's happened is because this is how I see it. Because keto really helped a lot of people lose weight or cutting carbs out of people's diets helped them lose weight because they're thinking like, I'm not eating like processed crap, breads, sugary junk, right? There's been, there's come this like mm, mentality in the nutrition world that like, if, if I eat less carbs, I'll lose weight. And then also I can kind of free for all it with fat, dietary fat. And then I'll like, that's, that's good. And what I see from that mentality, and I've been like kind of pulling people off of keto since 2018 when I started my keto in and out program and started saying do keto not forever. Like I have been in this little world in my land where it's like people coming off keto or maybe trying keto and like restoring carbs. And I can tell you this, what I see constantly is like maybe somebody tried keto and then they got in this pattern of belief thinking that like carbs are bad and will make me fat and fat is good and I can kind of have all I want of that. And you know what I see as a result of that? People who kind of lost some weight and can't lose any more weight. They don't have good body composition. They don't have a lot of muscle mass. Most people, okay, granted, there's always outliers for this, right? But most people, it's like, they, I just can't get the needle to turn anymore. And I, this is what I want to explain to you, okay? If you hear nothing more from this video, please understand this about how your body works. It's not just that you are more likely to gain body fat from overeating anything. No, no, I'm saying you are more likely to not be able to lose body fat or gain body fat if you overeat fat more than if you overeat carbs. Hear me out. There's no storage tank for dietary fat. You use what you eat and you store the rest as body fat. And it's real easy for the body to turn dietary fat into body fat. As I shared today, it takes 10 times. This is in my book, Short Term Keto. I'm not trying to promote my, my book. I'm just trying to let you know if you want more uh, on this. It's really in-depth in, in my book. But And I also want you to know that I really looked into this, okay? Really looked into this for over a year of my life. It takes 10 times fewer calories for your body to turn dietary fat into stored body fat, okay? It's really efficient. That happens easily. And whatever you don't use for your brain, for your cell membranes, for your sex hormones, there are very vital functions. You have to eat fat. I'm not trying to make anyone fat phobic, but you just don't need a lot for that kind of stuff. You don't need tons and tons and tons and tons of fat for that. And whatever is extra goes to body fat very easily. Carbs... The reason I can, I'm saying you can actually overdo it on carbs and be less likely to be fat than overdoing it on body fat, I mean dietary fat, is because you have storage tanks. Do we understand this? Do we understand what happens inside our bodies when we eat carbohydrates? Hmm? Who understands what happens? Where do they go? Because what I see is like I see all these accounts no disrespect, but I'm just like, I got to call it out because it's people are confused, okay? It's like, if I get any rise in blood sugar, that means bad. I'm going to get fat. That is not what that means because apparently there's a lack of understanding of what happens when your blood sugar goes up and insulin comes in. Where, what, I feel like the mentality is, it just sends, sends it all straight to body fat. 
And I'm like, no, dude, that's what diet, extra dietary fat does that. You know what happens with carbs? If you have room in your muscles and the more muscles you have, the more storage tanks you have, right? Thank you. It goes into your muscles and liver. And so the more muscle mass you have, the bigger the carb storage tanks you have. So this is in my book also. Like the, I think I've, I've got to pull it off the top of my head. It's been a couple of years since I wrote the book. It came out the end of 2021. But I think it was like something like 150-ish, somewhere around there. 100 to 150 grams of carbs can be stored in your liver. And then depending on how much muscle mass you have, it could be 200 grams up to 800 grams plus of carbohydrates stored in your muscles. And guess what happens if you work out every day? You dump that, you make room in those muscles and your liver. You dump it out into your bloodstream to have energy for your workout. So then guess what happens when you eat? You have room in your liver, in your muscles. So you eat those carbs. Sure, your blood sugar goes up. That's what's supposed to happen. That's not bad. That's what's supposed to happen when you eat food. Do we understand this? You are supposed to have your blood sugar go up when you eat food. That's not a bad thing. Okay, and it that insulin gets secreted to push the amino acids from the protein you ate and also the carbohydrates to be stored in your muscle and liver and you have room because you work out because you're a badass MFer. <laughs> and do you see how you can eat, like eating carbs is less likely to make you fat than eating too much dietary fat? Because where's the dietary fat going to go if you eat way too much of it? You don't want to store that in your muscles or liver. Your body doesn't want to do that. That's metabolic disease. Fatty liver, you know, and storing muscle fat in your muscles, same thing. That's not good. So your body doesn't do that. So the extra goes to body fat. Okay. So if you are not in a state of ketosis, you don't need to be going freaking bananas with the fat. This is what I see. I see this mentality of like, I'm going to eat like fatty foods are kind of a free for all, but carbs. Oh no, I better not eat like half of a potato. I'm going to get fat. And I'm like, dude, you have these huge storage tanks, but not for the fat. So don't be afraid of fat. Like I just had two grass, grass fed regenerative burgers. I did have a piece of cheddar, sharp cheddar cheese on top of one of them. And I had some Brussels sprouts that had been cooked and baked. That was a lot of fat. That was like my big fatty meal today. But before that, I had Greek yogurt, non-fat Greek yogurt, sweetened with stevia syrup and some granola that was low in fat, right? So it's like mostly I'm boosting protein. I'll go have more fiber, protein, but I'm not going to have another huge fatty meal because I already had a really fatty meal for lunch. Does that make sense? Okay, what about insulin resistance? Yes, this is the, this is the thing. What I see in the health world right now is that we are preaching sick like modalities for when you have issues for everyone. We're preaching like autoimmune diets for everyone. Diets for people with diabetes or insulin resistance for everyone. And that is not, not smart. Many of you, if you do not have insulin resistance or you don't have autoimmunity or specific issues, why would you want to make your body less resilient by like pigeonholing it? So I, I can only handle these things to the point that now you can't handle stuff. I want as much variety as I can possibly get. I want my body to be resilient. So, okay, going back to insulin resistance. If you are insulin resistant or have high blood sugar, yeah, definitely do keto or a low carb approach for a while while you fix that. And then what I see a huge problem and I've had to work with so many clients on this over the years is somebody lost a bunch of weight with keto, right? Like over a hundred pounds. And then they, it's really hard for them to accept that they are in a new body now. And so they're stuck in this pattern of carbs will make me fat. Carbs will make me go back to where I was. And no, if you're not insulin resistant anymore, good job. You did it. Now you can eat like a normal person again. <laughs> So yeah, if you're insulin resistant, that means the insulin comes in and it can't get into your cells very well and you start storing body fat and getting low cellular energy and that sucks. And I would totally do keto for that. And I do use keto. I always pretty much have like some clients on keto, but I, I only recommend it when it's needed. How do you figure how much fat to eat? Well, you got to play with it yourself. Um, you know, without working with someone directly, I'd say start around 30% of your total calories. See how that feels. Play with it. Also, women... I like to do with women, like 
okay, you have your calories, you got to play with it to figure out what that is for you because we're not robots and we don't fit into mathematical formulas. Like you got to play with it a little bit. I have to play with it with my clients too. Um, yeah, sure. I could like starve everybody out and get these awesome eight week transformations, but that's not what I'm about. I'm about helping people figure out what's going to work for them and something they can sustain. Um, so around 30% of your total calories with women, with your period, one thing that I like to do with women is you can keep your calories and protein the same and you can play with your fat and carbs, right? So that you can be more intuitive around like your, whichever phase of your cycle you're in that works too. But what I see, it's probably because I'm in a lot of like the low carb communities. So common. Sometimes I can't let people do that because they just won't eat carbs because they're like terrified of carbs. I think carbs are going to make them fat. And I'm like, all the fat you're eating is what's making you fat. And guess which, guess which macronutrient doesn't help you build muscle? Fat. So if you want to change your body composition, one of the biggest problems I see with this right now, at least in my world, because I'm so branched into the keto low carb world, is people are eating like insurmountable amounts of fat and very little protein and carbs. Okay, cool. I mean, that's great for your hormones, your brain health, and your cells, I'm sure, cell membranes. I'm sure all that's like really solid, but like your body composition sucks because you're eating mostly the macronutrient that doesn't do anything for muscle building. And you're most likely going in a cal caloric surplus because fat adds up real quick. So you need to like track it for a little while and see like how much fat you're actually eating so you can be like, holy shit, I'm eating like 150 grams of fat a day. Um, carbs seem to impact auto, my autoimmune and mental health issues. Have you seen this before? Definitely. Um, I'm lifting heavy four to five times a week. Yeah. So if you have autoimmune or specific issues, you know, like definitely go the, get your gut tested, work with, I hope you're working with like a naturopathic doctor, functional medicine doctor, functional nutritionist, something like that. So you can find out specifically what's going on with you and your autoimmune, um, food responses and also your gut microbiome. I do, um, microbiome labs, gut testing and my coaching. It's freaking awesome. How do you get a copy of my book? Go to shorttermketo.com or you can find it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Short Term Keto is the name of the book. There's a freebie on that shorttermketo.com though. I put like my top 100 keto recipes on there in case you want to go through a phase of keto when you read the book because the first chapter is like why keto is cool and then it's like the rest of it's like yeah but here's why I probably don't do it forever. What's up Redmond Relight? I love my Redmond Real Salt peoples. Love you guys so much. So that's it. Do we understand? If you overeat fat, this is what I'm, this is, this is my statement. You are more likely to be fat, to have excess body fat or not be able to lose body fat. If you overdo it on car on, sorry, fat, than if you overdo it on carbs. It, it's just how the body works. Unless you're insulin resistant or diabetic or something, you have high blood sugar because you can store it. Like I went and crushed a workout. I walked for an hour and then crushed a workout this morning. Do you know how much room I made for carbs and my muscles? I made room. So then when I eat, it just refills the liver and the muscles instead of going to body fat. Does that make sense? So that's why I eat pretty low fat after my workout, carbs and carbs and protein. Cause I want an insulin spike to shuttle the protein into my muscles. And I know that I have room in my muscles and liver to hold the carbohydrates. None of that is going to body fat. Does that make sense? But what if I came home and I just had like butter, you know, I just like went straight fat. I'm just like coconut oil. Uh. I wouldn't help with muscle repair at all. I wouldn't replenish glycogen in my muscles. So I wouldn't do like anything for muscle growth. And then if I'm just overdoing it on fat, like way too much fat, it's going to go to body fat because I don't need that much at once. Redmond, they want your products in Australia. <laughs> That's what somebody said. Redmond's the best. I know they have them in like all over the place, but maybe not in Australia. All right, that's it. If you're in ketosis, cool, yeah. Fat is your main energy source, but if you are not actually in ketosis, you might want to watch how much fat you're eating because it adds up real quick. Nine calories per gram versus four calories per gram of protein and carbs. So it adds up real quick, real, real quick. And if you've done one of my keto programs, 
you look at those menus, they're not some like crazy fat fest either. It's like a salad with some bacon and feta and hard boiled eggs and a little bit of dressing and some salmon with a little bit of butter and some asparagus with a little bit of butter on it or oil. It's like, it's not crazy. So that's just a problem I've seen a lot. It was like, especially if you have healthy blood sugar, you should know what your blood sugar is. You're crazy. If you don't know what your blood sugar is, you're freaking crazy. If you don't know what your blood sugar is, you need to like close this, close this, or you can keep listening, but get in your car, drive to a pharmacy, get one of those little finger prickers tomorrow morning. When you wake up before you eat, drink, do anything, see what your blood sugar is. If it's around 85, good to go. If it's over a hundred, you have high blood sugar. You need to do some sort of low carb keto type approach or eat a lot of protein and fiber exercise, all that stuff. Okay. But you need to know, but if you're in like the eighties, you're like 85, 86, 87, 88, something like that. You you're good. Eat carbs. And when I say carbs, I'm not talking about donuts. I hope people know that. Like, come on, do I really have to specify that people are always like, what kind of carbs? I'm like, what do you think? Nature carbs potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, beans, fruit. Yes. Cool. If you have specific issues with beans or blah, 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 then don't eat those. But I'm not going to tell the whole world to not eat beans because some people have problems with beans. And I do not buy into this whole, like every single plant food is like killing you. And it has oxalate. I know they have, there's such thing as oxalates and lectins, but they're not telling you the whole story. Most of those are you get rid of from cooking and not everyone is sensitive to them. Drives me freaking crazy. I, I won't get off on that tangent. What if blood sugar is low in the morning? Mm, there can be several things going on with that. You could have like reactive hypoglycemia. Um, uh, I mean, low, low, like like 50 or 60. I would work with somebody if it's really, really bad. You could have like really low cortisol. You could have cortisol um, like completely inverted where you're really low in the morning and high at night. So if you're like really anxious at night and can't fall asleep, like that might be going on with you. So I would work with somebody on that because it's in those cases, it's usually mindset stuff, unhealed trauma, have to do, 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 go, go, go like emotional stuff. Yeah. Like every time. <laughs> so that it could be that, but anyway, okay. I'll close this out. Thank you for joining me. Just had to get that off my chest. I want to explain that a little better. I wanted you guys to understand what happens in your body after you eat fat and what happens in your body after you eat carbs. Cause we got to get rid of this dogmatic, good, bad thinking and just like what actually happens so I can make my choices from there. So yeah, if I don't, if I'm like not working out for three days, cause I'm somewhere, I'm probably not going to eat as many carbs cause I'm not dumping out my stored glycogen out of my liver and muscles, making room for it. And then my body won't even crave them as much. It's really cool. Right. So it's like understanding what happens in your body. You don't have to rely on all these people to be like, carbs are bad. Fat is good. Fat is bad. Carbs are good. It's like, if you can understand what's actually going on, you can make your own choices and you can maneuver through life. Like, oh yeah. Okay. And that's, that's why I wrote my book too. Cause I'm like, mm, I hate dogma. I'm just trying to give you guys good information. Cause this is what I do for a living. And I know not all y'all do this for a living. So it's like, here's, here's the information, you know? <laughs> You make your choices from there. Ooh, see you in May. I can't wait. Um, I do have like a couple rooms left. I've got a couple people looking at them. But if anybody wants to come to my higher retreat in Maui, May 10th through 14th, that's what we're talking about. It's going to be epic. I can't wait. My I'm, my soul is in Maui already. Um, How can I see this later? Will it be saved? Yeah, I'll post it right after this. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to me rant rant and rant <laughs> about nutrition. All right. Just comment if you guys have any questions after. Okay. Much love guys. Bye.